good afternoon mr ralan and uh, welcome to ipf uh, exclusive video interview how are you sir good afternoon and uh, thank you very much for this invite i'm uh, very delighted to be here on this uh, chat conversation with you and your uh, viewers uh, thank you very much these are you know tough times but uh, we will get on with it okay so you, uh, before we begin can you just uh, brief us about uh, j matadi uh, you know company and uh, how how it has come into existence j matadi free trade zone was uh, given its approval in 2008 as the first uh, notified free trade and warehousing zone here in uh, chennai as some of your viewers uh, might know that in india there are three operational uh, ftwzs and we were uh, the first ones to get started here uh, in the south in uh, in chennai so we been we we actually got you know operational with our first client uh, dhl logistics in uh, 2010 and we been growing the whole uh, business model since then okay so so who are your main uh, talents uh, tenants are uh, the users of chennai fz our main uh, the anchor client was to start with was uh, dhl they were the anchor uh, client and then uh, as the business uh, started now we currently have companies like uh, tvs toyota susho which is a, a big uh, client we have carry indev which is a jv of uh, indev india and uh, carry from hong kong which is a major uh, operator we have other clients like seaways minerva loam logistics which is a korean company we have fm uh, logistics which is from singapore so overall we have close to around 10 logistic companies who are uh, operating their units in the zone because our model is we have been promoting the business with the logistic uh, companies that is the 3pl companies primarily who in turn work with a large number of uh, clients so uh, so just let uh, how what, what's the area total area of this uh, chennai fz uh, fz and how much has been you know uh, occupied by the by the users till now the total land area is around uh, 250 acres and in the first phase we have developed and built close to around uh, 1 million square feet of warehousing uh, a grade warehousing space and this entire space is fully leased out and uh, operational because in our zone we are not uh, offering any vacant plotted uh, sites to units for their development because right from the beginning we have been clear we don't want to be in a real estate uh, play so we only okay. offer a uh, built up space which is for clients who are looking for plug and play facilities okay so so why uh, free trade zones are important for india's economic development free trade zones you know if you see anywhere in the world play a very important uh, role because even in india uh, a free trade zone like ours has been promoted with the concept of plugging in the global supply chain with indian uh, industry and plugging in the indian industry with the global uh, markets for example in the free trade zone we have seen there are many uh, foreign uh, suppliers who are holding their inventory in the zone on account of the foreign supplier which means they bring in the product and their material inside the zone on their own account without really having any indian uh, entity as the importer so from the zone they are able to give just in time deliveries to the end uh, indian uh, dta consumer or the customer and give them ju the just in time delivery advantage is phenomenal for the manufacturing sector because a lot of industries we have seen practically now who were earlier carrying you know 2 to 3 months of inventory of raw material and components in their own manufacturing uh, facilities now they carry less than 2 days or maybe 3 days of inventory in their own manufacturing facilities 
this brings down you know the cost of financing of raw material uh, at the back end for the manufacturing companies and they can get it just in time without having to have large uh, financial money is being locked in uh, inventory and the same thing works you know for the exports because in the zone the foreign buyer can keep the product which they procure from the indian domestic exporters they can keep it in the zone on the foreign buyer's account which means that when a export is done from a dta factory to the foreign buyer once the delivery is made into the free trade zone the exporters uh, export obligation is completed and the goods now belong to the foreign buyer so the foreign buyer now you know he is able to aggregate procurements from various factories which are coming into the zone and thereafter he does the value added services of you know picking and repacking from these different uh, suppliers of dta factories and make them into new uh, mixed uh, product parcels which are then ready for the foreign store shelves this activity was earlier being done in singapore or in malaysia or in china or you know maybe in, in the us now these value added activities uh, are being done right here in uh, chennai inside the zone and the uh, product is directly exported to the end users uh, shelves directly so so what's the uh, what's the driving the demand for uh, chennai uh, ftzs like chennai see number one we are close uh, to the port number two almost 10 years ago the japanese uh, government uh, you know which was fronted by jica and by jetro they had come up with a report to create a supply chain corridor which included you know right from uh, uh, laos cambodia vietnam thailand and uh, india and in india it actually terminates uh, right here in uh, chennai extending from chennai to bangalore which is the chennai bangalore industrial corridor so this whole area was envisaged to become uh, a large manufacturing supply chain hub and uh, that's what we are seeing today uh, actually you know panning out so so what what is the impact of automation and digitalization on the warehousing you know zones see currently in the warehousing zones all our units are using uh, advanced uh, it systems for warehousing management systems where all the product which comes in is you know tracked by rifd and by other uh, such uh, tools and both the supplier and the end consumers of these products which are kept inside the warehouse is all technology uh, connected so that at any given point of time the foreign supplier or the foreign buyer has a complete visibility of what product quantities amounts are available in which exact locations it is available and from the customer let's say the dta customer who is going to pull this cargo he also has a clear visibility of what uh, components and items are available in the supply chain and he is able to you know from their own factories able to log in their orders and deliveries are made uh, from the zone so so to that extent in terms of warehousing management system it is uh, highly uh, you know automated with these it platforms but i think after look seeing what is happening now uh, with the covid 19 situation we see more uh, scope and room for automation where uh, you will have you know uh, robotics coming in gradually and slowly to do the exact uh, pick and pack activity because social distancing now is going to be the new normal uh, in the world going forward this is not going away anywhere uh, soon uh, so we see that happening uh, very quickly in yeah, terms of just digitization uh, just to answer your question of digitization a lot of the processes uh, you know like the receiving the cargo into the zone and uh, exporting the cargo from the zone it's all you know all the documentation and paperwork is all filed online because we have a platform called the scz uh, online 
where the units are able to you know do all their filing online and move the cargo both inbound and uh, ship the cargo which is outbound okay just now you touched upon the impact of uh, covid and uh, the impact, like the social distancing becoming a norm so so how it has impacted uh, you know chennai f f zones uh, you know business activity in the last uh, couple of months See, in the last couple of months, we have seen a drop uh, in the total volumes and in the throughput going through because the uh, the number of import containers that have been coming in, we've seen a drop of almost 45-50% uh, of the volume of cargo coming in and uh, likewise in the cargo going out because the supply chain manufacturing companies have been, uh, you know, in a shutdown, uh, lockdown mode for quite some time. And uh, the government of India's uh, Ministry of Home Affairs, uh, you know, directives have been to have a complete lockdown. On 15th of April, MHA guidelines were uh, were given to allow a gradual opening up of these special economic zones for uh, export purposes. But you know, individual states were given the prerogative of uh, you know implementing these uh, relaxed uh, reopening uh, schemes, or local states were required to take that call. And in Tamil Nadu, because we have uh, still some hotspots, uh, the Tamil Nadu government decided to keep the lockdown going till the fourth of May. But in the interim period, you know, units which are uh, handling medical equipment and pharmaceuticals they have been you know allowed uh, to keep working despite this lockdown and uh, for these people who are coming in and for whenever the lockdown is relaxed we have already got our uh, sops in place where every person who's coming in has to be you know uh, checked before he enters the zone in terms of you know sanit uh, sanitization in terms of wearing a mask and gloves and uh, checking their temperatures with the thermal scanner the vehicles are also being disinfected when they enter the zone and thereafter when they enter the unit premises the units also undertake a similar uh, you know sanitization activity and within the units itself you know they have a standard uh, protocol which is to be followed as per the uh, mha guidelines for safety and sanitization so these protocols are already in uh, place and being strictly followed. So post lockdown, I know what challenge, challenges do you anticipate uh, for in general the manufacturing sector and that effect or the impact of that on uh, you know free trade zones like Chennai. See the one impact that will be there is getting back to normalcy after lockdown is not just going to be a challenge for chennai ftz but it's going to be a national uh, challenge because number one like i said social distancing is now going to be a new normal now in the chennai sez itself uh, because the warehousing activity that is involved there are some areas where which can be labor intensive you know where the stickering and labeling and pick and pack activity is being done but fortunately uh these are large warehouses so the units will have to uh, reconfigure their lines where they will have to ensure that social distancing of at least six feet plus is maintained between two uh, people uh, as per the guidelines which are given so the units themselves are not going to face uh, that much of a challenge because space is not a constraint for them but mm -hmm looking at their customers who are manufacturing companies you know in the dta or whose products are being exported they are going to face some challenges because many of these factories which are uh, with a large uh, labor force for them to you know and bring about the social distancing will mean that the whole choreography of the manufacturing process will have to be substantially uh, changed and revived uh, before they can come back to normalcy, but I think this process will take four to six months after uh, the lockdown is relaxed uh, For them to come back into uh, you know the regular scale of manufacturing and production 
but on the uh, positive side there is definitely you know a lot of uh, potential for these zones and for indian manufacturing to to grow going forward just now you spoke about the potential of uh, indian economy and the manufacturing and also uh, uh, this, uh, uh, free trade zone trade zones bro so so what kind of you know new opportunities uh, you are looking at at to drive your business in future see in december of 2019 the government of india brought about a very proactive uh, policy by which they made all the special economic zones including ours into multi sector uh, sp uh, special economic zones so which means we were earlier permitted to do only warehousing activity now we can do including manufacturing uh, activity and services so we see that as a major uh, driver because a lot of the manufacturing companies in the supply chain are now looking to relocate from uh, china and from you know that part of the world into other uh, geographies and india is definitely uh, a very important uh, and an attractive destination for that so our business model actually fits into their kind of requirement because we as a you know business model we don't uh, give land on lease for you know 30 years or 50 years and then expect the foreign uh, unit to get the approvals and build factories and then you know invest into uh, assets which are there for a long term so we are offering them plug and play facilities whereby it's a pure uh, uh, leasing model so it's only a monthly lease rental which is uh, which is paid and this becomes very attractive and very easy for these foreign companies to come in because within 90 days of their uh, deciding to start their business they can become operational uh, thanks uh, thanks mr parul for sharing your spending time with ipf magazine and sharing your insight into the business of free trade zones Uh, so we'd also like to extend our you know, best wishes for you in future. Thank you very much for this call, and thank you very much uh, for the conversation. Stay safe and uh, take care. Thank you.